So we are here today to talk about improving your Spanish through examples. It is this amazing book that just came out a few days ago. I think most of you probably have it in your hand. Uh, some of you have ordered it off Amazon and are waiting for it. Don't worry, it's going to be there soon. Uh, the examples that we go through tonight are extra bonus materials. They're not in the book, so don't stress it out if you don't have the book in your hand. You might hear us uh, reference a couple of page numbers. Uh, just write those down and you can check it when you get the book. Okay. All right. So um, most of you know us. There's a lot of people here who are already part of the ShareLingo family <laughs> who James... Roseboro and I are who we are, um, but there's a few people who do not know us or might be watching the recording later and definitely do not know us. So my name is James Archer and I am the founder of the ShareLingo Project. It started about 10 years ago after I started, uh, I was retired and started trying to learn Spanish and I failed at everything. I failed at the apps and the computers. I went to four different language schools in Costa Rica, and one of them was Intercultura on uh, the coast in Samara um, uh, in Costa Rica. But for me, that process did not work. And so I came back to the United States. <clears throat> I started helping uh, immigrants improve their English, and they started helping me improve my Spanish, and that's what worked. And that's what led to starting the ShareLingo project, which is about connecting English speakers and Spanish speakers to work together. Now, from the very, very beginning of this project, it's never, ever been about James Archer teaching Spanish. I don't do that. What I try and do is help people understand how to help each other. The whole goal here in ShareLingo is for you all to help each other. Uh, English speakers and Spanish speakers, certainly. I mean, that's that's the core of everything. But also English speakers helping English speakers and Spanish speakers helping Spanish speakers. And that's why I am super, super excited tonight about what is happening right now uh, at this very minute on this very call, this workshop, because James Roseboro, who we often call Bryce, because we got two Jameses in the house, um, uh, James Roseboro was helping this group get a handle on the subjunctive and he started giving a whole bunch of examples uh, and he started helping people. So James, I want to hand it over to you and tell us, if you don't mind, kind of a little bit about your Spanish journey and how you ended up here and why you ended up doing this book for us. Well, first of all, thank you for the introduction. And also, I want to thank all the people for being here. It's it's an honor to be here with you guys. First, basically started, okay, when I was a kid, just listening to different languages. Um, Spanish was, of course, one of the languages that I, I listened to uh, uh, along the lines with German and Italian, just other languages, because I spent the first part of my childhood in Europe. So anyway, when I got to high school, um, I figured, you know, take Spanish because, you know, we have to take at least, you know, one language, but it wasn't so much that I had the desire to learn. It's just that I needed, I needed a credit and Spanish was the, you know, I took that, you know, after I got out of high school, I went to I went to the army. Um, in the army, I I spoke with you know there were a lot of people from different places that spoke Spanish, so I I picked up a lot more. Um, so after I got out of the army, um, I decided okay I'm gonna really des you know I'm gonna designate my time to you know dedicate my time to learning this the language mm -hmm. so and i said i'm going to be fluent by this time you know i'm going to be totally fluent so basically i i got a tutor um and but that only lasted a couple of a couple of weeks because my job transferred me um to west virginia now west virginia is not 
a lot of Spanish speakers, depending on what part. Some parts have more than others, but there's not a lot of Spanish speakers. I knew people that speak Spanish, but as far as everyday interaction, so a lot of days I I I might not see anyone that spoke Spanish. So I just figured oh, my dreams are kind of going down to twos now. Of course, music and stuff like that. I you know I listen to music in Spanish and English. I I didn't completely you know disconnect from Spanish. I still listen to music and things like that. So. Uh, after I came from West Virginia in 2019, people that are speaking Spanish around me. So that kind of motivated me. So I, you know, I start watching videos on YouTube, uh, listening to tutors on, on social media, asking questions, mm -hmm. reading people's comments, you know, just, and then I started to work at uh, Amazon and there's a, ton of people there that speak Spanish from you know, every country you can think of just about. So that kind of made me want to, that motivated me even more. So I came across the ad for ShareLingo and it looked very interesting because out of all the things I did, it, it, it just, the, the fact that it was is you. You know, in this case, Spanish speakers wanting to become fluent in, be fluent in Spanish. It, it, it just seemed like a perfect, perfect opportunity. But I was still a little unsure about myself. But I, James, I talked to you a few times and, you know, we mm -hmm. had some course, you know, we corresponded on email a few times too. Uh, and, you know, you, you, I like what I saw. I, I like, I watched a couple of videos. I saw the process and. So I signed it up and I came glad you up here. So, so thank you. And what brought me to the subjunctive is, is that I noticed um, the reason why I even brought it up because I knew that people were having problems with the subjunctive, not just beginners, people that were intermediate and advanced. You know, I, I pay attention to the comments when I, when I re watch videos, I, I read all this stuff and a lot of people had, had problems with it. So um at that point, I'm, you know, just our small group, I figure, you know, I could at least help the people in our group. And, and that's and what you have. Uh, the people who have experienced this, uh, raise your hand or clap or do something. If you <laughs> if you're part of the group that has seen, yes, what what James has done for everybody. Thank right. You. Yes. There's a, you got a lot of support here. You got a, a lot of gratitude and support here, James. Right. Thank you. It feels good yeah. to be here. Yeah. So what happened for everybody else is that the group, we have like this WhatsApp group that interacts together uh, and then also a regular Monday night meeting um, of the Sherlingo family. And the group was asking for more, ex more exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This really helps. And then somebody said, you should make this a book. And he did. And it's got like hundreds hundreds of examples in his book of all levels of subjunctive. And we're going to go through tonight what is the subjunctive and uh, why it's important that you look at the subjunctive. James mentioned something that, you know, regardless of what your level is, a lot of people have problems with the subjunctive, and we don't want that to be the case anymore. I'm going to start sharing again. Uh, anything else you want to add, Bryce, before? No, just that it uh, it's just it's very important, of course, because we can't skip the subjunctive and wait until a year or two years down the line because you need to know how to say things right now. Like, get things like, for have example. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. That's yeah. something simple, but it's a subjunctive and we need to know. Right. So. I 100 percent, 100 percent agree. Anna, I want everybody to know that Anna Ugarte is here. She's helping us. She's supporting us she's leading us she's um <clears throat> invaluable and she's here anna have we forgotten anything thank you no you're ready to share again okay. um so by now everybody should have gotten a pdf file and a new pdf file we weren't sure how much time we we're going to have today and we don't want to run out so originally we had 20 examples for tonight and uh james created 20 more just in case we need them uh it's in the whatsapp group uh, that anna shared and it will also be in the facebook group and 
tonight we're going to play with some of those examples and edit them and put in the translations and that'll be available also along with the replay video from tonight uh so if anybody's uh watching this on the recording so glad you're here and uh everything's in facebook okay um our goal here with these six sessions is mostly to do activities together to try these examples together to look at this and uh, our number one goal is that you don't get stuck on the word subjunctive like and, and the, the different names of the tenses and moods that we use, uh, but you just really, really absorb as much as possible from all of these examples that we're going to share with you. Uh, we will invite you to go ahead and ask questions. If you have questions about the sentences or how do you say this or how do you say that, we encourage you to just put those into the chat window here and we'll get to everyone that we can if we miss some then we'll try and answer them tomorrow or the next day in the group uh, please don't ask grammar questions and the reason for that is is the whole idea of this book even though we include james has included all of the grammar definitions in the book for each one of the uh, the subjunctive moods um the whole point of this entire thing is that examples are more important than the rules. And so we don't want to get hung up and waste 10 or 15 or 20 minutes trying to explain a grammar rule here in, in this environment. Uh, let's try and reserve that for as many examples as we can get through tonight. Okay. All right. I would uh, like to add something, James. Yes. But if there is any grammar question, please post that in the Facebook group and we are going to uh, help uh, with that, okay? So mm -hmm. we are learning all, but here we want to just focus on the examples. Yes, I didn't want to say, yes, thank you. You said that much better than I did. Yeah. Okay, um, does everybody have access to the new Facebook group and the new WhatsApp group for this book? Okay, if if not, write to us and we'll get you access. Hola, Edgar, ¿cómo estás? Hola, hola. ¿Estás, estás en un hotel? No, es de, de background. Yes. The shining. The shining. Great. Okay. Well, I'm really happy you're here. Okay. Entonces, nosotros vamos a hablar en mucho en español, en inglés, uh, más en inglés que en español. Pero si tiene preguntas, por favor, um, escríbalos o, o puedes preguntar algo. Estamos aquí. Eh? Ana, Ana puede traducir. ¿Pueda? ¿Pueda? ¿O puede? Puede. Anna puede traducir. Okay, I, I was right. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So uh, first thing we want to do, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we're going to go through the agenda. Tonight's the only meeting where we're going to do most of the talking. All of this stuff that we're going to talk about tonight for the others, we're going to not regurgitate all this stuff again. You're going to be able to do a lot, a lot of examples. All right. But we just have to get through, through a few things tonight. So thank you for your patience. All right, session one tonight, um, we're going to define the subjunctive, kind of give you an idea of what that is, why it's important, why it's super, super important. Uh, uh, and then for the examples that we go through tonight, we're going to kind of focus on the present subjunctive, the present subjunctive. Um, Bryce, do you have a one or two um Well, there are words that are basically express how we feel in the present, words that express our emotions or feelings towards something, uh, express our wishes, our hopes, our attitudes, or our feeling towards something in the present. And there are things that, some of the things are, there are things that can happen or they might not happen. So okay. there's, give, so there's give no an certain example, English uh, and Spanish. Well, uh, he seems like he doesn't like working here. He seems like he doesn't like working here. Okay. How do no I say parece, it? No parece que le guste trabajar aquí. Okay. So, 
that's how he is now that's the present right yes yeah? yes okay um great thank you now in next week uh we're gonna perfect subjunction subjunctive not subjunction um all right now one of the key things here is we are very, very aware that when we start talking about present perfect anything or the past imperfect anything, uh, a lot of people um, might uh, think, uh oh, it's getting complicated. But that's the whole point of this book. It's the whole entire point of this book is that um, even if you don't want to learn the names of all of these things, we are we're giving them labels like the present perfect subjunctive. We're giving them labels, but don't stress out the labels, focus more on the examples, right? Uh, this one, uh, subject, subjectivity to talk about hypothetical situations. What would an example there be, Bryce? For the present perfect? Yes, for next uh, week. Um, I'm surprised that he learned I'm so fast. I'm surprised that he learned so fast. How do I say that? Me sorprende que haya aprendido tan rápido. Okay, did you get that word right in the middle? Haya, que haya aprendido. Okay, that is that little word is for a lot of people something that uh, we don't learn soon enough in our Spanish journey. And then when Spanish speakers say that to us, we don't know what it means because it's not hacer, it's not. A ver, it's not, it's Aya. Ah, where did that come from? It's like it came out of the blue. Okay, so that's going to be really interesting for people. Uh, in session number three, the week after that, then we get to the past imperfect subjunctive. Give us an example there. He told me to call him in the morning. Okay. Me dijo que lo llamara por la mañana. Okay. Lo llamara. Okay. Yes, Mara is the subjunctive. Okay. He told me to, he, I, you know, he told me to call. I might do it. I might not do it. But he told me to do it. He definitely told me to do it. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay. But it's uh, imperfect. Okay. We're going to get into that. Uh, the week after that, in session number four, a little bit of that week talking about the ShareLingo method. Now, even if you have been part of ShareLingo for a long time and you've been using the method for a long time, please come to this week and bring questions, bring comments, bring support for anybody who's not used the method. Uh, the ShareLingo method was developed with thousands and thousands of people that we helped uh, when I was in Denver, Colorado, uh, to have a way to effectively practice together, English speakers and Spanish speakers. When you have that opportunity to work with a Spanish speaker, um, you don't want to sit there and stare at each other and say, what do you want to talk about and, and flounder? Uh, so the method is really important. It's all scientifically based and all that stuff, but super, super, super simple. And there's a lot of people that can back that up. So we'll dedicate some time to that. And then the rest of the time in session four, we're going to talk about the past perfect. So what is that, James? Past perfect. Why is it perfect? Okay. Well, I'll give an example. If you would have got up on time, you wouldn't have missed the bus. Wow. I can si barely say that in English. <laughs> okay. And in, in Spanish, si te hubieras levantado a tiempo, no hubieras perdido el autobús. All right. Hubieras. How many people are 100% confident with the use of hubieras? How many people are not 100% confident with the use of hubieras? Right? Okay. That's because we should have been exposed to this <clears throat> right from the beginning when we first started learning Spanish. We should have had some exposure. It doesn't mean that we needed to study it necessarily when we were beginners, but we should have at least been exposed to it. And that's what we're doing now. We're catching up. Hubieras. It's not as hard as you think. All right. Okay. In session number five, we'll talk about the future subjunctive and mix it up with the imperative. And why are we doing that, James? Because the imperative 
and the subjunctive a lot of times go hand in hand with the things we say. Like mm -hmm. if I say, call me when you get off work. Mm -hmm. Llámame cuando salgas del trabajo. Mm -hmm. So imperative, everybody, is fundamentally a command. Do it. Yes. It's, it's imperative that you do this. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and so they're they're mixed together because they're kind of constructed the same way. No, well, they're, no? they're constructed differently. The, you know the um, the the imperative is it's just a, it's a command. It's just we we speak like that all the time. Call me when you do this, or or let me know when you when you arrive. You know, there, there's a common to. speech. There we go. That's the distinction, right? Yeah. Anna, go ahead. I would like to add a couple of things. Yes. First about the Schrodinger method, okay? Um, one of the reasons or the most important reason why we want to explain this is, well, two two main reasons. One is because this method works, okay? And second, is I'm sure that you all have noticed that the book is a bilingual book. Okay, so in Sherlingo, we use bilingual materials. Okay, it means that you have one side in English, one side in Spanish. Okay, and the reason is because you can use it um, by yourself. So you will always know um, if you are an English speaker learning Spanish, you will have the right translation in Spanish. Okay, this is not a Google translation, this is a human translation. Also, if you practice with a native Spanish speakers, okay, you uh you both can use the same book. Also, you can interact, can translate from English to Spanish and vice versa. And also when you are practicing with your native Spanish or English speaker friend, uh, you can uh, ask questions, important question, or you will uh, hear some feedback. We can also say this, or in my country, we say it this way. Okay, and that's a huge thing because we learn a lot. That's why we want to introduce the the, the Sharingo method. Also, because think about this, sometimes we have a lot of reading, a lot of listening, but sometimes we don't understand when people is talking to us. Okay, so with the Sharingo method, we make sure that we get translation from English to Spanish, Spanish to English. We have the listening, the comprehension, and we have the speaking, the conversation with other people. So that uh, builds our confidence when we want to, to talk with other people, okay? So that's that's why we want to uh, touch base on that. And second, the imperative, uh, okay? We Latinos talk a lot in an imperative way. And also what, what um, James Rosborough was saying is that uh, we, uh, the imperative and subjunctive goes together, okay? And the reason is because the subjunctive uh, is used to uh, for commands, okay, for ask, for request, and that's how the imperative always come most of the time at the beginning of the sentence, okay. And they are mixed, they are combined, and that's uh, that's a little bit advanced, you know, because sometimes it's really hard to identify one or the other but those works together most of the time. But we will explain this in a very easy, simple way for you. So you won't have to think about the imperative mode and the subjunctive mode, okay? You won't even notice, you will use both. Awesome, thank you, thank you. All right, <clears throat> and in week number six, we're gonna dedicate where there's not gonna be any teaching or whatever, we're gonna just try and do as many examples as possible. And there was something else uh, in the activities in week number six, right, Anna? Yes, uh, in the last session, we are going to work a lot with all type of examples, you know, easy, medium, <laughs> complicated, all yeah. type, okay? And so we are going to dedicate uh, the, the we're, four we're, hours we're gonna... or 90 minutes, whatever we need, <laughs> yeah. okay, to master this. Also, uh, notice that, for those who have checked the book, se session five is about future subjunctive. We are not going to stop there because that is something that is not used in um, in a regular conversation, okay? That is more for writing purposes and that is used uh, lawyers or administrative, uh, people who work in administration or these areas, mm -hmm. they use it a lot, but it's not something that you guys need 
Uh, not, and we don't it, use it. It's not it's not commonly used. So let's no. not let's not dedicate a lot of time in this session number five to that. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Let's move forward because we have a goal tonight of not taking your whole time just talking. Is the subjunctive. The subjunctive is, it's a feeling, it's an emotion. It's me wanting to something to happen, wanting someone to, to do something. Um, and they're not, they're statements that are not of certainty and which that is what makes them the subjunctive. There is not a certainty that they're going to happen. They, they might, they might not. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So if if everybody could keep it boiled down to pretty much as simple as that, that's the, that's, you know, it, it expands from there, but that is the core. That is the, the number one thing that you want to do here. So <clears throat> um, it, it has to do with the intention that the speaker has at the time that they're forming the sentence, hypothetical situations, orders, opinions, describe situations, and you'll see that it is a grammatical mood, okay? <clears throat> now, I have to do this, all right? In all of the conjugation charts that you've seen, and a lot of the books that you've seen, or the YouTubes or whatever, they talk about the Spanish tenses, right? Okay. Technically speaking, there's a difference between a tense and and a mood, and the subjunctive is a mood, not a tense. But let's not let this get difficult, all right? So for our purposes, actually in reality, but, but the, the short thing here is that a tense, we're gonna say tense when we're talking about time, like past, present, future, the time that something happens. That's a tense, what tense is it in, all right? The mood has, Somebody had done something. I wish they had done something else. Now, there is a great, great uh, definition on page 26. There's just a short paragraph or two that it really describes the difference between, uh, you know, the, the tense versus the subjunctive mood. And I encourage you to find page number 26 and read that so that I don't have to talk all night. But don't let it throw you off if we refer to this mood. That's what we call it. If you want to think of it as a tense, because it's in the conjugation tables as the subjunctive tense, okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. uh, you can do that. Now, it's also the subjunctive is used like in every part of speech for everything. Spanish speakers use it all day long, every day. It's what makes Spanish so beautiful and interesting. And unfortunately, because it's lumped in with tenses, it's, it's a tense that we don't get to learn in school until the very end of after we've learned all the other tenses possible, then somebody throws in the subjunctive. And that's why when we hear aya and hubiera and words like that, it's like, no, I don't know that yet. All right. So one of the things express beliefs and judgment. Shouldn't we be able to say, you know, I think I should have done my homework yesterday, right? Something like we should be able to say those things. We should not have to wait until we're advanced Spanish speaker to be able to say something like that or have a nice day. Que tengas un buen día. Que tengas un buen día. We should learn that when we're beginners, not at the end of our Spanish journey. Um, anything you want to add about this, James or Anna? about this slide? Uh, I don't think so, let's go on to the next one. Um, so what we're gonna see, a lot of examples tonight, we're gonna highlight uh, the subjunctives that you see in these sentences, and we're also gonna highlight any trigger words for that. So um, Blaine, you wanna, or Bryce, you wanna tell us what we're, uh, I got the wrong middle name there. Um, <laughs> Bryce, you want to tell us kind of what we're thinking about here with this slide? Yes, trigger words are words that cause the subjunctive. Now understand that, you know, it doesn't mean it's a blanket statement that every time a certain word is used that a subjunctive will be used. You know, we have triggers such as 
Um, I want, quiero que. Uh, it's importante. It's important. It's importante que. Now, on that one, just as an example, if I tell a, if I say a general statement such as, it's important to read every day. It's importante leer todos los días. That's diff. That's an indicative. That's basically an indicative. That's an indicative statement. Excuse me. But if I say it's important that you read every day, it's importante que leas todos los días. That makes it subjunctive. So just understand that importante does not automatically make it a subjunctive. We also have it's best that it's mejor que, unless a menos que, just as examples. Right there. <laughs> starting on page 32 and we don't want you to try and memorize all of these and and think for some reason that every time you see one of these trigger things it automatically means you have to use the subjunctive it's much better to just get familiar with this big long list kind of read through it get comfortable and and kind of slip into that mode well you know these are indicators that i should be probably using the subjunctive it's more about learning what triggers are and 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 what causes them or what they cause it's not a matter of like memorizing all of these are triggers okay remember from the beginning we want to make this process easier not harder okay so yeah um, yes Anna. Yeah, i would like to add two things one in english one in spanish okay, okay. the one in english is um in this book you will you will read that um Sometimes the trigger words, um, it has the subjunctive verb in it, okay? It's like the examples that um, we had here, crean lo que quieran, creer que, or creer, yo creo que, it's a, it's a trigger word, but, no, but also in this example, we see like that same trigger word, crean, is uh, the subjunctive verb form, okay? Crean lo que quieran. En Spanish, para mis compañeros latinos, hay una cuestión aquí importante sobre las, a los desencadenadores del subjuntivo. Las palabras del subjuntivo como qué, cuándo, espero qué, ojalá qué, etcétera, esos son desencadenantes del subjuntivo, del verbo. Pero lo que pasa es que el verbo para nosotros cambia en su forma subjuntiva. Y entonces, usando el, el ejemplo que James estaba diciendo antes, it is important to read, es importante leer. Eso para nosotros es indicativo, ¿verdad? Es, es, es en, en su forma normal, digamos. Pero en, para nosotros, el, la, la, el, desencadenador, el desencadenador en este caso sería, es importante que, o es importante, ¿verdad? Pero en la forma subjuntiva sería, it is important that you read. Para nosotros en español cambia, es importante que lea o que leas, ¿verdad? porque no hay un verbo subjuntivo, no hay una forma subjuntiva del verbo en inglés. Entonces seguimos usando el mismo verbo. It is important to read. It is important that you read. Uh -huh. Ambas usan el, el, el mismo, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿por qué les, es, les estoy haciendo hincapié en esto? Porque a veces nosotros cuando estamos aprendiendo inglés queremos encontrar, no tenemos la confianza de hablar porque no estamos pensando en, en cómo lo diríamos en español. ¿verdad? Pero a veces en inglés no hay una forma exacta o diferente de decirlo, en este caso pues el subjuntivo, para que recordemos que en inglés el verbo no cambia, solo para ellos en español. Awesome. Now, if anybody did not get all of that, it's okay. All right. And then I'm not going to do a whole translation of everything she said. My gosh, I, could, I couldn't remember all of it. Well, within our family, the Sherlingo family, um, this is dominated by English speakers learning Spanish, uh, but Spanish speakers who are learning English have the same goals and dreams and problems that we have. And uh, because the subjunctive is such an integral part of their daily speech, they may have difficulty figuring out how to say something that they would say in subjunctive in their own language, how to say that in English. But Anna mentioned that 
you know, um, what was the example you just used, Anna? Es importante, es importante que es. It is important to read, es importante leer. And the second one, it is important that you read, es importante que tú leas. That's the okay. subjunctive. So, so one is an imperative, the other one's a subjunctive. So if you're practicing with your Spanish practice partner, they ha may have a real big question about, well, which is correct? Like, how do I translate that? And that's what you're going to help them with, is you're going to say, either one's okay, right? Don't stress out. Okay. Okay, okay. let's stop here for a second. Brian asks, es importante leer versus es importante que leas. What does each option convey? Does it create a different feeling among the speaker? Is there an implicit meaning? Absolutely. That's a great question. Absolutely. So let's look at it literally first. What do the words actually mean? Es importante leer means reading is important. It's important to read. That's a fact. That's our opinion. Okay. But it's a, as, as far as the speaker is concerned, the person saying that sentence, that is a fact. It's important to read. Right? Okay. Now, es importante que leas. It's important that you read. Okay. Well, that's my opinion. Okay. And you may read or you may not read. And that, that kind of does absolutely change um, the, the different feeling about what are you trying to signify, right? I might be telling my, my eight-year-old, it's important that you read, right? As, as differing from a general statement to the world that reading is important. Does that help? Yes, to add something else to this, um, think about this, es importante leer. The science confirmed that it's important to read because you will get smarter, <laughs> yeah, for example, it. okay? For example, okay, es importante que leas, is what James was saying. I'm expressing my opinion or my desire. That might happen or that might not happen. And that's the whole point of the subjunctive, that you can express what what your desires or your opinions, your belief about something. So that's the intention of the speaker. So that's why it change. Okay. Es importante que todos leamos. Okay. And I'm I'm giving this or I'm saying this as an advice. And mm -hmm. I would love for all of us to read more. But you guys might not read. Or I might so, read. Because this is a good I, I'm I don't want to get off on too big of a tangent here, but this is what's normal. All right, is that we don't learn leas early in our Spanish journey. So we use leyes. That's what we see. Leer, right? Yo leo. O tú leas, right? Leemos, right? So since we don't know the word leas, then we, don't, we certainly don't know when to use the word leas with an, I'm talking about the difference is the a leas instead of leyes. Okay, what we've learned is is just one tense, the present tense, and we haven't learned the subjunctive mood, which allows us to do this. And then what happens is we hear speakers using that naturally, and 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 our brain goes, wait, 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 that's not what I was expecting. I don't know what they're saying. And so then we go into a meltdown and we're trying to, to process what the Spanish speaker has, has said to us and we miss everything that they say after that, right? So if we can expose you to this over the next six weeks, it's going to vastly improve. Even if you don't, you know, like get there or, or start using the subjunctive in your everyday speech right away, that's okay but you're going to be exposed to it and you're going to be way better off and you're going to have a lot better chance of understanding what people are saying. Okay. We got to move on. Anna, you're supposed to let me make me not talk too much. <laughs> I will try to do my best. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. So tonight we want to focus, we want to do a whole bunch of examples. I don't know how much time everybody has. We'll stay with you as long as we need to, uh, but we want to go through some present subjunctive examples. All right. Um, so uh, 
Bryce, help us out. Give us a definition for the, you know, kind of um, warm us up for what it is that we are going to be looking at here tonight. Present subjunctive. Uh, me gustas. Uh, for example, if I say Carlos is the captain of the team. Carlos es el capitán del equipo. And another person might say, but I don't like that he is the captain of the team. So I would it, it changes it from es to sea, pero no me gusta que sea el capitán del equipo. So you see how that changes. One is a Carlos is, that's spoken as a fact, but no, you know, no me gusta. I don't like that he is the captain of the team. That changes it to subjunctive. So just just giving you a contrast, trash, just so Absolutely. you can see two two conjugated verbs, one in the indicative, one in the, in the subjunctive. So you can kind of see the difference there also. I appreciate and, it. And and this is the problem is that a lot of a lot of people that I see, even at the intermediate approaching the advanced uh level in their learning of Spanish really have not gotten comfortable with sea, or sepa, or uh, the, those, those conjugations that are out there and, and relegated to the end of your Spanish journey. And everybody would be so much more comfortable and, and you know, so much less stressed if we learned sea, right? That, oh, that's just a different form of S, right? If, if we could just grasp that as, as a beginner, right, we wouldn't, we wouldn't go through three or four or five years of struggling to learn Spanish and still not knowing what say I meant. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I get, I, I get overexcited. All right. So <laughs> refer, what are we doing here, Bryce? Uh, referring to things or actions in the future. Okay. We're going to talk about that tonight. Do you have recommendations? Yes. Uh, express a desire or demand and talk about the negative here for a second. I think that's a big deal. Negative. Cause there's sometimes right where something might be. Like if I uh, say something, a negative statement, for example, you know, I doubt, I doubt that he comes with us. Uh -huh. uh, uh, dudo, dudo que venga con nosotros. That's a negative statement. I doubt. Mm -hmm. that he he comes with us mm -hmm. right so oftentimes i'd like to add something sorry to interrupt you <laughs> so we can just jump to the <laughs> examples <laughs> mm -hmm. um the present uh the present subjunctive that we're going to work i mean we're, that's what we're going to try tonight um notice that the session it will say past, present, future, whatever. But something super interesting and really cool about subjunctive is that even with present, you can uh, talk about actions in the past. I said with the future, it's just future. But with the others, we can express actions or talk about something or, or someone in the past, present, or future. We connect those actions those events okay so let's forget the names present past okay Th those are just the, the the labels okay but let's understand the uses how we can okay. use the present to express the different tenses yes and anna hates it when i say this but i have to like put that in my own words even though we're talking about something called the present subjunctive, it can connect us to past, the present, the future. That's what you're telling us, right? That's exactly right. Okay, 